This is the first video in a series of all related to running Node-RED in the camera and things you can do with Node-RED running in the camera. So the first thing that we're going to do is install Node-RED. And if you go to panosme.github.io, the link is below, you will find a description of Node-RED. There are two versions that you can install, Node-RED Installer and Node-RED Bundle. The bundle is the same thing as the installer, except it has additional uh, nodes pre-installed that is commonly used when you're having like a dashboard, tables, and other things. So I would recommend downloading the, the Node-RED Bundle and go with that. That's what we're going to be using in this video. So you go up here and once you install the zip file and uh, extracted that, these are the files that you're going to have. This video is going to be based on the version 3.351. Uh, when you watch this, there may be later versions with some changes. So you will see three EAP files. These are the ACAP files. So the Node-RED bundle 351 ARC64 is designed for ARCPIC8. So if you have an ARCPIC8 camera, this is the one to use. If you have a camera based on Umbrella CV25, it's uh, recommended to use the Node-RED SD Bundle 351. SD stands for the SD card, meaning that in this case, the flash in ARCPIC-8 is large enough to hold the whole installation. And in this case, it's going to be installed on the SD card. And if you have an ARM 7HF camera, you need an SD card and, uh, um, and, and select this one. So we are just, we can just uh, um, add an app and we can just drop this in here. And the installation is going to go pretty quick uh, in this phase because Node-RED is not a part of the package. The Node-RED is going to be um, bundled or uh, go, it's going to be fetched from official sources. It's going to install uh, Node.js, NPM, and then Node-RED. So before you start here, um, you can, if you are behind a proxy, you can go to settings here and you can change the port on which Node-RED is going to be running on and you can set a proxy. If you restart Node-RED and update to latest version, it's going to go out and fetch the latest Node-RED version and update it on the camera. I'll be canceling here and we can... Now this is going to take some time. Um, let's see if we can start looking in the app log and see. So as you see here, it's, uh, it's fetched Node.js version 18.5.0 for Linux ARM uh, cameras. But now we'll just wait and until it's finished, if you click open here, it's going to be... So once the installation is complete and everything can run, this page will automatically turn into the Node-RED workspace. Okay, so now everything is installed. It's going to welcome to Node-RED 3.1. Uh, let's not go through this. If you want to go through the help and, and the changes, uh, that's okay. So this is the Node-RED workspace. And here you see all the pre-installed nodes. And if we scroll down here, uh, there are a bunch of access nodes. So these are the, the, the old, or not the old, but the uh, 
the nodes that you can use to interact with other cameras. And these four events, uh, or the, these four nodes, which is the events and the camera, the trigger, and objects. So I'm going to go over these four nodes in a later video. So we can just remove that. And then you have the dashboard notes. So one of the first thing that you should take into consideration is Node-RED is not using the camera's um, user authentication. So anyone with access to the camera can go to port 1880 and access Node-RED. And in small installations and on a, on a protected network, um, that's okay, but you should really considering changing, adding uh, privileges. So normally you would edit a, a file called settings.js um, that you directly in your Linux system, but it's hard when, when Node-RED is installed in the camera. So what you can do here is going up here and import and examples. So there are examples in the Axis host node, or these are the four nodes. So you can click here and import the securing node red. I'm going to change this to only modified. So what it's going to say here is import bcrypt. Well, uh, bcrypt is all, this is the bcrypt. So in, in the bundled node red version, bcrypt is already installed. So what you see here is an eject node. Uh, let's deploy this. Set password here. So let's generate a password hash. And so here's where you change it. Uh, let's just call it password. And it's going to do a hash and of that. So Node-RED doesn't store passwords in clear text. It's going to store it in a hash. And this is a bcrypt hash. So it, now it says, well, now we created the uh, the hash. Let's it says here the instructions is double click settings and which is this one. So this is the settings file, which is the default settings file, and. What it did say in the instruction is um, on line 20, uh, 82. So if we go down to 82, and this is the area of security, and all of these, the double slash means it's commented, so it's not going to be used. So we can remove these. And this is the user, so the default here. I can change to anything. I'll, I'll change this to Fred. And here is the password hash. So we can remove that, go up here, and copy not the quote marks, and add that right there. So the admin is for the Node-RED workspace. And if you want to use, if you need password on the, uh, on the dashboard, this is right here on line 127. So it's going to have a user so let's add a user for the dashboard just so we can see how that looks like. Uh, I'm going to be adding the same. I'm going to be putting me and remove that and adding that. So the HTTP static is, uh, let's leave that on common. So now we've added a user Fred for both the Node-RED 
workspace and the, uh, the dashboard. There's one more thing you may want to change that if you're going to be using local time in your flows, it's important to set your, your time zone. And in this case, I am in Sweden, so it's going to be Europe and Stockholm. So you can Google in time zone names and find the name for, for your time zone that you're setting in. So now we're done editing and deploy. And this is actually, you can see where the settings file is going to be located. So we're just going to be writing that in there. So that's it. You can actually uh, remove this, but so the last thing you need to do is restart Node Red. So let's do that. So we just stop the Node Red. And start it again. Now it's started and let's go here and refresh so it'll take a while before it actually gets started so just keep pushing refresh there we go so now no one's going to be accessing your node red unless they know the user and password so in this case it was fred and password login And now we can actually just remove this um, unless you can always pull it back if you want to be changing uh, the password or updating the settings. So we can just delete this so we don't need that anymore. Um, so just to check the, the, uh, the, um, the dashboard. So let's go up here and import examples and host and there is one called video player so where you can view video in uh, in the dashboard so this is what the flows looks like here's a drop down with different kinds of resolution this is a function node that based on the selection I just made I'm injecting width and height different width and height into a um, dashboard template, which is basically HTML file and JavaScript. So in this case, uh, the resolution is coming in and we're just replacing the media stream tag with that. So we can do that and go to deploy. And now we can go into, let's create a new um, a new tab here uh, and so the UI is going to be accessed by slash UI so as you see here this is a different login prompt for the dashboard so you can that you have a different user but I chose to have the same username and password so password sign in and so now we see this is the, uh, the dashboard. So we can select a resolution. Let's do that. And since it's accessing the camera, so this is now, you need, now you need to provide the credentials for the camera. So I have a username on the camera called NodeRed with a password and sign in. And this is the camera that I'll be using in the, um, in the examples in later videos. So we see everything is working, the dashboard um, and everything. So stay tuned and watch for the next video.